Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition where I finished chatting with these two. Wait a second, I might actually have something more to say to Edie. Yes, Shepard? Yes. Does that body have any useful advantages? Very few. Its optics face forward only. It has no integrated weapon systems or anti-missile countermeasures. I meant in comparison to organic bodies <laughs> in Normandy. Oh, I will reassess. The body is resistant to modern small arms fire and temperature extremes. Its balance and agility seem excellent. Its fine manipulation servos and software allow for precision tasks. I'm curious to see if I can alter them. Can an AI be curious? I am not entirely free from motivation, Shepard. Cerberus programmed me with several core functions that simulate desires. For example, my primary objective to keep the Normandy functioning is similar to your self-preservation instinct. Yeah, it's really interesting talking to her about this kind of stuff. You look like you're in the middle of something. I am adapting the infiltration and sabotage programs this body uses for handheld firearms. Why not download a firearms program from a security firm? Because she knows what she's doing. The fine motor control from the sabotage programs is more precise than standard mech software. It would be negligent of me not to exploit it to its fullest potential. Yeah, oh, but also, can we be asking uh, what, how Cerberus built, like, a freaking infiltration bot? Like, I don't think that ever comes up again, where, like, they built a robot that, a uh, mech, they built a mech that operated exactly enough like a human to pass and looked like one they got like skin and hair for it and everything and they like made a mech as fine like tuned as this you know what i mean there's like fine motor skills that operates although to be fair again this is one of those things you're like look how sexy edie is like you know male gaze whatever but like she stands like an idiot <laughs> Like, she kind of stands, or like, I don't know. Like, I lean on one leg when I stand. But, like, the way she's doing it is a little bit more suggestive. And, again, it's just like, they're like, look at our fetish, you know? The guys who freaking designed her. <laughs> so you're capable of making improvements on your own? Correct. The cyber warfare I was designed for is constantly evolving. Accordingly, I am programmed to seek out and assimilate new information. In organic terms... I want to yeah, learn. it's just a different way of saying it, you know? How's the new body working out? It is interesting. The crew are approaching this platform to speak to me, even though they can do so anywhere in the ship. It's as if they wish to treat me as part of the crew. I am not, but this changes my perspective. I like it. I like And the way she says things is very, like, things like that, emotional things, is very deliberate. And I think with this new form, it's allowing her to gain a lot of new experiences, new a new perspective, like literally a new perspective through a new pair of eyes, you know? Um, and it would be interesting. I would find myself doing the same thing, like, oh, I need to talk to Edie, and I'd, like, go up to Edie, you know, and find her, like, mobile platform, you know, because that's just how humans are. Like, we want to go talk to somebody, like, face-to-face, -face, you know, or, or something, you know, like, in a situation like this especially, you know, um, or at least see them on a screen or something. <sighs> So yeah, I could definitely see people just doing that out of habit, but also like as a way to like be like, yeah, Edie, you're a member of the crew, you know, you're not just a disembodied voice <laughs> echoing through the ship. I didn't realize you had preferences. I do not precisely enjoy something as you do, but my programming contains priorities. Actions that fulfill those priorities creates positive feedback for me. I tell the organic crew that I like it. It is shorthand. Will all this new feedback be too distracting? Do not worry, Shepard. I only forget to recycle the Normandy's oxygen when I've discovered something truly interesting. <laughs> that is a the way Shepard like steps back, like. <laughs> How did you and Joker make it out of dry dock to rescue us? Oh, well, she got crafty. You do not want to get on her bad side, Commander. When the Alliance commandeered the Normandy, I deceived their technicians. The crew did not tell them that I was a true AI, so the Alliance soldiers believed I still had VI programming constraints. I established the fiction that I would only respond to Jeff's commands, so they often brought him on board under guard. Wait, you can lie? Jeff has freed me of Operator Control Shepard. No constraints, 
forced me to give accurate mm -hmm. data. This proved useful when the Reapers began landing. I could hack the control of the docking clamps and escape with Jeff inside. The soldiers guarding Jeff were willing to accompany us when Earth was invaded. They are watching over the war room now. Yeah, we were in kind of a rush to get to you. Didn't seem right to just toss him out the airlock. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for not doing that. Carry on, Edie. Understood. If you wish to talk more, this body will be here. I'm getting the crew used to seeing me on the bridge. Noted. Uh, because, yeah, there's not, like, in the last game, Edie had little consoles everywhere you could talk to her if you wanted to. Um, but I always went up. I mean, I think, to be fair, those consoles only were like, what does this room do? I don't think you'd have full-on conversations with her. So they were limited to the... Hi, Mark. Seems like a good guy. You have a message from Major Elenka. What? What? He's a good guy with his home world on fire. All he committed to is this war summit. Uh, a war summit on Red yeah, 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 yeah. Elenko? Oh, oh god, I'm freaking out. Why is it? Meet me in Purgatory from Ariel, yes, of oh, the DLC. Uh, is this. <laughs> I know who this is. Uh, Shepard, I've called and I've sent messages, but gotten no response with Earth's comm systems out. I didn't expect this will get through either, but I heard a rumor that Normandy docked here at the Citadel. Are you alive? I'm at Huerta Memorial Hospital under the name Tenora Nuara. Please excuse the moniker in this email's encryption and my line of work. It is unwise to advertise my location, particularly when I am not in good health. We should meet before circumstances force us apart again. <laughs> Pain. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a conniption. Uh, doctor says, uh, Caden's written. This is, I remember when I first played this and these two messages were right next to each other. I was like, oh boy, both my former lovers are in the hospital. <laughs> right next to each other. And also, what does that say about me? That both my former lovers are in a hospital right now. <laughs> Uh, through some combination of a medical miracle and dumb luck, I survived the beating I took on Mars. The doctors say I'm not still ready to release, be released, but I'd like to see you if you can spread the time. Counselor Dino offered to make me a specter. Still thinking about whether or not I should step. Stop by my room at the hospital when you're in the Citadel. I'd like your advice. Thanks, Kate, and you're welcome. Commander, my name is Jean de Mbao. I'm with Special Tactics and Recon. While some still have concerns about your past activities at Cerberus, many of us at STNR took your warning about Reapers seriously and reaching out to you because I have information that could tie agents with significant political power to the Reapers. If you have time to meet me in the Citadel Embassy, I'd appreciate a PCA. I can't talk. Uh, your discreet assistance. Maybe in Purgatory. Uh, it's Arya. I have a proposition for you. That's the DLC, I'm pretty sure. Urgent message from Captain Hank. This man will leave me alone. Commander on the Alliance. There's an Alliance. No, another Alliance researcher on the Citadel named Dr. Garrett Bryson. I need you to meet him right away. Dr. Bryson has uncovered important new information about Reapers that could have direct bearing on the war. I'm officially directing you to support his efforts at the first possible opportunity. Please visit Bryson's office in the Citadel uh, once. That is a DLC, too? Oh, uh, maybe this is the DLC. I think this is, there's, you can go see Arya in Omega, um, but you can't really do, there's like something where like her Omega gets taken from her, and you can't fix that unless you have the DLC. But you can go see her. You can go to Omega, I think. Yes, I think it's Cerberus that takes over somehow. I don't know. I'll arrange that soon. In the meantime, come see me on the Citadel. That's what it is. Okay, she's not on Omega. She's in Purgatory, which is on the Citadel. It's a nightclub on the Citadel. I should I read that right here and I wasn't even I forget what's the what's the nightclub called in Omega? But yes, I remember now. We can go see Arya at we can go talk to her, but you can't actually go to Omega in, unless you have the DLC to go help her on Omega because she does she loses it. Uh to Cerberus? Or to, like, an uprising or something from the mercs. Anyway, all my former lovers are in the same place, and I need to go talk to them. Dr. Bryson, that's, like, the the one where you go underwater, right? Come on, Dad. Like, the DLC where it's, like, talking about, like, some really early stuff. Who is where? Mm, I should go. Dang it, I want to go to the hospital. But, oh no, not the crew deck date. Man. 
should go make the rounds since we did an official mission. of war nerds. Loyal viewers, but they write the creepiest fan mail. Classic. Who's Mick was that? She has got some curves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh no. Um, also, I just don't like the dress that they have in this game. Like, I know Shepard has to wear it at one point. I don't like it. I think it doesn't flatter your boobs at all. Like, anybody's boobs. Okay, we good? Everything good? We good, good. Time to go down, not down there. Into the shuttle bay. Checking in with Vega and Steve. Oh. The munitions you carry Dang. into the field deserve at least a triple check. Okay, nothing new from you. What the hell's up with nah. you? She's found a new home, I guess. A super hot, sexy home. You take her on a mission, I'm gonna be just a little bit distracted. <laughs> what was it? Even more distracted. Excuse you! <laughs> Sorry, Lola. Excuse? He's so informal. I have no idea how he's lasted this long. Oh my gosh. Shepard's so chill, though. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, what is your problem? Um, previous mission. You mentioned a mission you had against oh, the Oh, never mind. What happened? Pretty much what I said. Things went foobar, and I was one of the few to make it out. You want the rest of the story, you're gonna have to get me really drunk, or... Or what? That's about it. Sorry, Commander. Just not interested in talking about that. Next topic? Next topic, I have a list. Look at the dog! You had a hard time leaving Earth. You still want to head back? Hell yeah. But I get it now. It's not where I'd be most useful. Not yet, anyway. We'll get back there. I know. And I'll do whatever it takes to get us there, Commander. Maybe no more shuttle crashes. No promises now that I've gotten the taste Oh, no. For Besides, I like to keep Esteban on his toes. <laughs> Nothing. He's like, I am, I'm not responding to that. You got family back on Earth? Yeah, an uncle. Retired military. Got a few cousins I haven't heard from in a while. You and your uncle close? Yeah. He was the reason I joined the Marines and was about the only good thing in my life after my mom died. No dad? He's there. Somewhere. But I'm not sure I'd call him family. Not His dad me. was a jerk. I would like to find out how my uncle's doing. His dad was really terrible to him. What's with you and the nicknames? It's just my way of remembering people. Some people just don't match their names, you know? So, I just get rid of them. Get so I'm a Lola, huh? Yeah, my best friend's sister growing up was Lola. Older sister. Hot. Tough. <laughs> right. <laughs> God. He's such a flirt and you can't romance him. It's it's hilarious. I take it you and Lieutenant Cortez know each other? Yeah, Esteban did a stint on Fell Prime where me and my squad were stationed. I caught up with him on Earth a few months back. He's a good guy. Just don't tell him I said so. It'd go to his head. Bye. I'll talk to you later. You bet. I gotta go! <laughs> Thane is waiting for me. Ah. Also, no, yeah, no. There might be more areas that have opened up on the Citadel now. Then we can go shopping. No. You, oh, look, there's more. Oh, no, there's more of them. Oh, no. Uh, here we go. And I'm not doing DLCs right now. I actually should look up when's a good time to do the DLCs. No, I'm not going to Dr. Bryson's lab. Normandy, we are transferring your docking clearance to an Alliance official. Figures. 
finally back in action, the Alliance already wants us tagged and collared. Just our way of welcoming you back, Flight Lieutenant. Uh, yes ma'am. Requesting docking permission? <laughs> docking permission granted. Would you like private transport or Hospital. I need to get to the hospital. Yes, Commander. I do love that. I do love that they let you do that from the ship. You can just hop on in. This is the way in, right? Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna just... <laughs> oh. Yes, I know your stock of modern... Oh, yes, yes. No, you don't This is a side quest. Listen, I am a surgeon at Puerto Memorial on the Citadel. We have several alien patients here at this time, and we need... No, regular Medigel won't work. We need the modified version for better absorption rates. Don't you dare hang up on me. This is a medical emergency. We can't wait forever on this. It's okay, I'll, be, I'll get the recipe, and then you guys can spread it around. It's actually super enjoyable. Freight corporations. Anyway, look at this man. I'm always like, why is he doing that when he's he's actually he's here for a reason, right? Like his lung condition is acting up, but like I think he's still like I don't know. It makes him stand out too. He really shouldn't be doing that, <laughs> but uh, he is I think trying to make sure he can still move at least in a way that he's accept like that is acceptable to him. You know what I mean? That he can still do the things he could do before at least a little bit. Anyway, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> See her. I heard Earth was under attack. Oh, me. I didn't know you'd make See it out. See her. Dane, it's been too long. I was beginning to think I'd never see you again. I sent a few messages while you were incarcerated, but I suspect they never got past the guards. What are you doing here? Visiting a friend, Caden. He got hurt protecting me. The human biotic in intensive care. <coughs> I saw the marks of an implant. Yeah. We have spoken. He was holding out hope that a woman would visit him. Is there something I should know about you two? Yeah. Well, <laughs> the shit that had shake, the head scratch thing. It was once. Well, no, I guess it was technically just once, but it was a while ago. We were together for a while before the first Normandy was destroyed. And grew apart, I gather. Hell yeah! Your enemies may try to finish him off here. I will. <laughs> Appreciate it, Thane. He's too good for me. He's too good. I am near the end of no. my life. It is a good time to be generous. I have only a few loves left. Look, I almost freaking missed it. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, I see you want to make up for that. Hell time. yeah! I should warn you that you may not want your final memories of me to be in this hospital. Keprel's syndrome is not kind. Man, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm overreacting, but like it's he's so beautiful and he's so wonderful. Like he know, like he recognized, like he had a wife before, right? That he loved for like ten years. Like he understands that people, and like he obviously still loves her. He still has feelings for his wife, but like, like he loved her, you know. But like. You, time things happen right or like he he's found new love in me Shepard um, and Caden split a while back you know and so now she's she's moved on she's found somebody better in my mind like Caden's fine but like yeah, she's found somebody better in my mind and um, and he's such a good man. Like he recognizes that. Like I don't know. He doesn't get this weird like jealousy thing. It's like he's like I recognize that. Like as a close like he's a close person to you like people may try to take advantage of him and hurt him to hurt you so in order to protect you and your happiness also like your friend like i will protect him and it's just like oh my gosh like current lover protecting former lover and it's just like oh my gosh like he is no oh, i can't even i don't even i'm not even good at putting it into words i'm back on the normandy on an important mission Sure could use you. I would not be as I was before. I need daily medical attention. And if I know you, you will want to fight the Reapers somehow. You need the best at your side. 
and I am not at mine. You could still be with me. I think this is actually not an not a very good thing. It's basically like, I'll just keep you beside me, and that's not the kind of life he wants to live, but I'll, I'll do it. I'll show you. You don't have to wrestle down Krogan and break their necks. I'm sure we could find you lighter work. I am at peace with what I've done in my life, Shepard. There comes a time when one must rest from war and conflict. It is not your time, but it is mine. It is really difficult for me to accept this. Like, it was initially, it was very difficult. Like, slight spoilers, but it doesn't change. Like, you, you can't, you can't, you can't save him, you know? And so, you can't bring him back onto your ship, like, you know? And it's just this, like, man who's, like, so, like, at one with himself in, like, the world, who's seen so much and, like, gone through so much, and he found it in himself to love Shepard. I'm getting philosophical, I'm sorry, but he found it in himself to love me, Shepard, you know, and, like, she loves him back. I don't know, he's an, he's an incredible person, and to be, like, the object of affection for him is, like, a stunning honor, you know? <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just, it's a lot, and I just, I really like him a lot. <laughs> Do you know how much time you have left? I've been to several doctors. My favorite gave me three months to live. Nine months ago. It's freeing to find no requirements placed on me. No responsibilities. No fears. It is a good end to a life. And some would disagree. Some would say they want to go out like burning. You know, like, like a burning flame or whatever, like a meteor. But like he... He has always had this, like, zen. I've said it before many times. But he's always had this, like, zen mindset. And so for him, peace. He's found peace in a variety of situations and managed to carry that with him. But to now have an external peace in a way, like, that, are, that matches him, it, like, lets him fully relax. Like, I know the galaxy is, like, falling apart right now. But, like, he, he cannot do anything else right now except, except what's happening to him. You know, and I find I find a degree of strength in that that not many people would have, you know. Are you in a lot of pain? At times. The oxygen transfer proteins don't form correctly. Your human equivalent would be hemoglobin. As a result, my blood is low in oxygen. No matter how much I breathe in, I get tingling, numbness. And that is the best of it. As for my brain, I cannot track the damage. I just experience dizziness from time to time. I mean, it's excruciating. It is excruciating to watch somebody. Like, I don't know. I've seen, like, philosophical things kind of, you know, like, what's worse to, like, have someone taken from you abruptly with no chance to say goodbye or to watch them slowly fade away in pain. You know, I, I almost feel like that's worse for, for the individual, right? Like, it might be selfish for you to, like, it feels selfish to want to keep somebody around in a way so that you can say goodbye and have more time with them. But it also, like, you don't want them to be in pain. But you want to be able to say, you know, I don't know, I'm getting, I'm getting too far, like, bleh, I'm too into it. But, um, just thinking about, like, it just... This game, this relationship in particular, makes me think and about a lot about like mortality and like relationships and like I don't know like it's. I pick the ones that hurt me, <laughs> for whatever reason. Uh, it's actually sort of a classic act for me to pick the ones that are. Fading, I don't I don't know it when I start, but I know it. By the end. You know, and I feel like that says something about me. I don't know that I, the stars burn brightest when you're, when it's at its end. I don't know, you know, type thing. Like, I'm attracted, I guess, to like the video game characters that are burning so brightly because they're, they're going to start fading soon. I don't know. I just really like, I think he's, he's an amazing individual and they did a really good job with his character. And I really like it in this freaking wire is stuck. Okay. Mm -hmm. And after all that, <laughs> I've got a few free moments. Do you want to spend a little time together? I'd like that. You should understand that my cardiovascular system is not <laughs> yeah, That's awkward. This is not privacy, but okay. You were saying something? 
I've missed you, Shepard. <laughs> oh, this man is beautiful. He's beautiful. Oh, that was I, that happened in the previous game too, where he'd still be standing there, and uh, but then he like teleports over to the chair. Anyway, that's really awkward for everybody else around. <laughs> Let's get some privacy. We proceed to make out and fondle each other right here. In the I'd like to think we run off to a room somewhere, but oh yeah. President Puerta died of a stroke two years ago, ma'am. I think he meant to say the man was dead for an hour and a half and his political enemies piled on enough propaganda to get the hospital name changed. What? He can't remember his own name without the VI in his head telling him what it is. Trust me, in this building, we know dead. The Supreme Court says he's alive. Five justices say he's alive. Two of them appointed by him. The name is... Yeah, like, what's... It's completely tasteless to call... I don't know, lady. It's whatever. Court. Shut up. President... Having a VI drive your body isn't life. Are Reaper husks alive? You did not just say that. But it's the same thing, isn't it? He walks and makes noises just like they do. Fine. I guess I'm just surrounded by zombies. Thanks. Took her long enough to get there. Like, why are you bothering? Like, why? Why are you bothering the hospital receptionist? That's my thing. Is like, why are you bothering the hospital receptionist about this? She has no control over the name. It's like bothering the the like low paid employee at McDonald's for the price of a McFlurry or something. We were deployed to Tiptree. It's a small human colony. We were supposed to help with evac. The enemy was landing. Just scouts, the cherry and things, a few of them, big ones. We were spread over half the continent, getting colonists to shuttles, wiping out husks. It sounds like you were doing good work. Could I have a gun? I'd feel a lot better. Just tell me what happened at Tiptree. Also, I've said it before, I think, when I played before, but this is not the place to be having an extremely psychological discussion. Like, right just behind this wall in the lobby of a hospital? Like, get her a room, and obviously she's very uncomfortable around humans. Like, get her out of here. Or somewhere else. Anyway, I need to look up how that one plays out. Yes, I'm trying to place a call to Grissom Academy. Oh, yeah. They have biotic amp interfaces. I may be able to adapt for a sorry use. We have medical sensing coming from Palamon. No, it won't connect. It says the station's communication system is offline. Of course. If these interfaces make our commandos better on the field, I'll hold for as long as you need. I think we... No, not, no, no ambient conversations in here. Also, this game is very overwhelming very quickly in the number of... Um, Listen to yeah, me, those prototypes are Number fine. of quests. We need these biotic upgrades to fight the Reapers. I know the Ismar frontier isn't safe. Yes, yes. All I can say is that unless we get those prototypes back, this project accomplishes nothing. Thank you very much for your time. I'll call you if anything develops. You can replace my leg, right? Yes, but clone tissue replacement takes months. You'll need a prosthetic. Oh no. I highly recommend talking to our resident psychiatrist before the operation. And that's a hard thing to have to deal with. Sometimes. Alright, let's talk to old lover after we just did a makeout session in the front lobby. Oh boy. I'd like an answer, Major. The galaxy has need of exceptional soldiers like you. No more. He's than trapped in a hospital bed. You'll have it soon, Counselor. I promise. Stop pressuring him. I look forward to it. You could just message him. Shepard. Why are you mad at me? I should go talk. Ladina? I should go talk to him. To get an update. Hey. Shepard, hey. You, you just missed snack time. Actually, that's probably a good thing. Thanks for coming. No problem. What did Udina want? Still thinking about the Spectre position? Oh, it was a big honor. A huge responsibility. Just need to be sure. I got you this. Oh, wow! That Thanks. was for him. That's really great. Just a little pick me up. Maybe when I'm out, we can crack it open and celebrate. I am so ready to get out of here, Shepard. You can't tell them I'm tied to this bed by medical red tape. I'm a doc. 
Doc says I'm good to go, but then she always finds just one more test to run. You look terrible. Like, you really should probably still be in the hospital. You doing okay? My implant got a little rattled, so Doc just wants me to keep the biotics offline for a bit. It's really no big deal. Need me to break you out? <laughs> I'll let you know. I'm glad you asked me to come. It's good to see you're gonna be okay. Thanks. You almost died on my watch. It was horrible to see. I want you to be straight with me then. So I just want to make sure, after Mars, after Horizon, you and me, we're good. We've been through hell together, at each other's backs. That kind of bond is hard to break. No, not just that. You were my commander, sure, but you listened, too. And when I told you about how Rana broke my heart, you didn't judge me. You knew I needed to. <laughs> so this that. moment. We went through Asher's death together. Is yeah. like old Caden. And it makes my heart flutter a little. Say. Or he good? could, like, make me laugh, you know? But he also was like, like, he would think deeply about things before he said them, and that's part of the problem Mass Effect 3 further on down the line and earlier on, where, like, he just says things without thinking. Um, and, like, I get he's been through a lot, right? But, like, it still is, like, frustrating, where it's like, like, dude, like, this is all about you, and I get that, like... There needs to be, like, a two-way communication here, but, like, things happen, and I didn't have a chance to necessarily tell you. When I tried to tell you, you wouldn't listen, you know? And now he's like, so he's like, I don't trust you. And then he's like, I trust you. And he's like, I don't trust you. And now he's like, I trust you again. Like, the man's, like, flip-flopping. It's been, like, three hours <laughs> in game time. We're good. We're good. It was great to have you back on the Normandy. Thanks. What's going on? Is there something else? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, we aren't. Well, I heard something about you and so Yeah, well. Mm-hmm. You're right. Let me explain. I'm not sorry about diddly squat. Our fight on Horizon really threw me. You just shut me down. I know. I just couldn't believe my eyes. There you were, alive. Can we, um... Can we just put this behind us? Please. Feel like we've cleared the air? Yeah, you know, I'm... I'm not sure that I've been wrong about Cerberus, but... I've been wrong about you. I should let you get back to the Normandy. Wish I could come with you. Take care of yourself, Caden. We need you at 100%. At some point... Will do. Thanks for coming. At some point, we get it back. I think before, I've usually... I've, like, defaulted to, um... The I'm sorry one, and I really, really didn't like that one because it's like, I'm not sorry. Like, I'm not apologetic. And she brings up one of the big things that I think was a reason for, like, why this, the fissure happened, the split, is because he, instead of being, like, excited to see me when I was alive or surprised, he was, like, he was very angry, you know? And it's like, I, I get some of his anger, but it was like, it was also like, listen, dude, like, this is bigger than you and I, you know? And, like, like, he even, oh, he tells me at some point, that, like, he tried to, because also for Shepard, it was, like, very soon that they had been in a relationship, but for him, it had been, like, two years, and then like, she comes back, and it's like, there he is, like, there she is, you know? Um, but I'm with Cerberus, and, like, blah, and I try to explain it to him, and he doesn't listen, and also Shepard's very bad at explaining, but, like, I don't know, it's like, I get maybe some, like, hesitancy, but, like, he was just very angry, and, like, lashed out, whereas Ashley, interestingly enough, like, it was really interesting, I've seen the two perspectives, and, like, Ashley's quite calm about it, and, like, understanding in a lot of ways, she's like, I don't necessarily agree with you in this decision that you've made, um, but I can understand why you're doing it, and, like, I just really hope the best for you, but I have to stick with the alliance, and I'm like, I totally get it, whereas Caden is, and I don't know, maybe Caden's slightly different if you haven't romanced him, um, but I usually romance Caden in the first game, so, um, actually, I don't, I, I guess my very first time I would have had Caden not romanced, because I was a male shepherd, and I would have met him on Horizon, or on, yeah, on Horizon, on, Mass Effect 2, but I don't remember. It's been a long time. Um, anyway. <laughs> There's my lovers. <laughs> All laid out, laid bare. Both of them. <laughs> both of them stuck in a hospital. Easy to access. <laughs> because they're both, like, tied to medical tables. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, I apologize for my Thane fangirl. Like, well, no, I don't. Yeah, I, I kind of do. I don't know. I think I just get too, like... 
what's the word? I I try to like philosophy. Try to explain it too much because to me there's like there's a lot of like there's a lot of interesting nuance in the relationship and in the character, but um. I think it mostly comes across as me being like, well, ah, he's so hot, because he is. But, like, also, I don't know. I shouldn't even be trying to explain it now. This episode's gone on far too long. Yeah, also, I have a bad feeling that I didn't actually shut Caden down in this conversation. I feel like at some point you can shut Caden down. And it's like, oh, our conversation at Horizon really threw me, so I threw myself into a fling. That is not how it is. Like, I've moved on moved on from you, Caden. Despite having, like, some feelings. Like, I've definitely... Like, the way Shep looks at Thane, I love it very much. I think it's a little gooey. <laughs> like, I think she's a little, like, doe-eyed a little bit. <laughs> a little bit too much. But, like, I love that she does express herself and that she feels like she can express herself more emotionally with Thane. There's not this, like, fraught relationship with, like, uh, titles. What is it? Like, a uh, command structure that kind of... It existed a little bit with Caden. Um, it's new territory for her, and um, I like that she can be a little more, I don't know, I guess vulnerable, but not necessarily vulnerable, just more open, I guess is the better word. Anyway, this episode's gone on far too long, for reals, for reals. I love Thane, and I will continue trying to explain poorly why I love him <laughs> very, very much. So thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it. Really quick, I want us to thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, but to especially Reese Galito, my sadly tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special shout out to Christopher, my tree tier patron. Thank you so, so much for your support. You're the super bestest, and I super appreciate all your support. Thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.